Powerful Owl is Australia's largest owl. They're an apex predator and they rely on some pretty unique habitat features in order to survive. Hi, I'm Jake. Welcome to EnviroTube. So Peter Clark's moved on from EnviroTube, but we are going to catch up and see what he's been up to. <laughs> I'm just spinning out a bee. I'm covered in bees. I feel like a bee midwife. I actually feel as though I've done something good for the environment. I've got a group of people with me who are absolutely committed to local environment and wildlife issues. Jules spotted this Lamandra Glauca. What a beautiful little Aussie native. Urban noise on flying fox communications. Got to make it so that these little creatures can actually move from area to area. The amount of wildlife here is phenomenal. If you've got a swimming pool, turn it into a pond. This is a result of a productive pond. It's not fish in a cage, it's actually fish on the plate. As you can see, I'm, I'm covered in bees, but I love it. We've actually got so many enthusiastic people here. I hope you sort of get this enthusiasm and realise why we're doing it. I mean, it's more than a job for us, it's something that we love. I love working in Karingai. You've got these urban areas, and these beautiful reserves. And you don't have to go far to see a range of special animals. So we've come out into this bushland reserve to look for a hollow, a really large hollow. And the only trees that are able to support these big hollows are the trees that are really old. There's one over here, which is an Angophora costata, a type of gum tree, that has a hollow in it that's large enough for the powerful out. That sort of tree is probably in the order of about 200 years old, and they're rare in the landscape. If you listen now, you can actually hear there's a whole range of birds around us, rainbow lorikeets, cockatoos. They're also hollow nesting birds, and so there's a lot of competition for hollows. And powerful owls like to have multiple entrances, and you can see that they're both there. So we're down here to visit a friend of mine, Chris Charles, who's a local photographer, and he's taken some amazing photos of powerful owls, and he probably knows the powerful owl pair in this reserve better than anyone else. He can actually tell the difference between the individuals by looking in their eyes. He often has to build uh, something to hide himself from the powerful house and will spend many, many hours here to capture the perfect shot. So we're here in Virotube to talk about powerful owls, and I've got my friend Chris Charles, who's been photographing birds in this reserve for over 10 years now. Thanks for coming down. You're welcome, Jake. And uh, here we are in the urban environment, and yet just behind us, there'll be powerful owls. I hope we can find hope so. them. We're at the back of someone's house here. Should we just knock and see if it's okay if we get access to the reserve? Yep, sure, let's do it. Let's go. Hello. Yeah, there's quite a few of them through the Sydney Basin now. They've, they've done really well over the last 10 years. Yeah, so I hear. I went to, up to a conference and it was, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was good. We've improved their ecological niche. Mm -hmm. uh, we've encouraged the ringtails and that's encouraged them the owls. So the powerful owl roosts in dense foliage in some of these trees. So that's what we're going to have a look at. All right, let's 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 have a look down here, see if we can find any. They've been here a good 20 years that I'm aware of. And presumably they were here a long time before that. This has been a good territory for them, you know, they've, uh, they've had quite a few young owls. Not much uh, whitewash here, is there? Nothing no, I haven't seen much. So whitewash is the, the powerful owl poo, and it sort of paints a picture of where they've been. Little patches of whitewash here. You can see how white it is from the, all the calcium chewed up bones that they eat. They crunch up most of the bones in the possum and those they can't, like the uh, jaw bone and some of the leg bones, they uh, regurgitate in a pellet. Where we are at the moment is actually connected through to Lane Cove National Park and the powerful owls create a territory within these, these gullies throughout the Sydney Basin. Sometimes the powerful owl and the cockatoos will compete for the same size hollow. But the cockatoo wins in terms of its numbers and abundance, it's the powerful owl that has the advantage of strength. The loss of those old trees and those hollows is one of the major things that are impacting the powerful owl. Okay, 
in the urban area, we can often lose some of the largest trees in the landscape. And they're really important because it's the large trees that allow for the large hollows, which can be used by powerful owls, which need really large hollows to breed.